Testing, testing, testing. All right, it is six o'clock. We will go ahead and get started. I'm Dr. Wendy Burnett, the principal of High Point Charter School here in Sparta. With us to my left, we have Elena Hamamoto and Sophie Robertson, two High Point Charter School students. We also have Mrs. Kathy Town with us this evening helping. I would like to thank Meadowview Middle School, Mr. John Blaha, Mr. Bob St Sanders, um, Innovation STEM Academy for helping us and hosting us here this evening. Um, I would also uh, like to let our candidates know that Sophie will be timing you as you give your answers tonight. You'll have 90 seconds for your opening statements, and she will hold up a timer when you have 10 seconds left, which says 10 seconds remaining, and she'll hold up a sheet when your time is up that says time's up, and also the timer on the phone will go off, so you'll hear that as well. We do have a few rules this evening. While each person is speaking, other candidates in the audience are asked to remain silent. Please hold all applause and reaction until the end. Candidates, please finish up when your time has expired. You do not have to use your entire 90 seconds or 60 seconds. However, if you do not use your time, you may not give it to another candidate. Please address only the moderators in the audience, not the other candidates. Any and all moderating decisions, should the need arise, will be made by Dr. Burnett. <clears throat> Each candidate will be given 90 seconds to share an opening statement, including candidate background, reason for running, personal goals if elected, and any other information they feel is important to share. And the candidate who answers first this evening will rotate in ballot order, beginning with Mr. McKenna. Mr. McKenna, please begin with your opening statement. I am fully prepared for this tomorrow. Just for some <laughs> reason, I was convinced that when it was until Wendy emailed me nicely with something that capitalized tonight. Um, I guess my opening statement, I'd like to thank these four candidates and the one that wasn't able to attend tonight. Um, this has been a wonderful non-campaign kind of campaign. Um, I, I think it really fits in with the climate and culture on the rooftops that we've tried to work toward this year. Uh, and there's nothing that can wreck climate and culture faster than politics. The school board isn't about politics. It's about kids. The process that gets you elected is political. And through that process, a lot of times it can get ugly. And as candidates, maybe look at other candidates, the ones who always pay are staff and kids. So this isn't about me. Um, none of this is about me. And I really do thank you guys. It's been wonderful to not see campaign signs, not read things in the newspaper that attacked any of our staff, teachers, um, it's been a really healthy last eight weeks. Thank you. Good evening, <clears throat> High Point students, board members, fellow candidates, friends, family, and most importantly, you, the Spartan community. I'm Daryl Witten III. I reside here in Sparta and I have done so since 2017. I'm a military family. I've been in the military active duty for 19 years. May will be my 20th year, should have been my last. However, 
promotion allowed me to continue my service, which I will push on for another two years. Uh, my goal is to stay here, retire here, as I have two, two children who have graduated from Sparta and a third that is a freshman this year. I chose to run because I want to be a part of the community. And as a military family, that's difficult as we tend to move year, you know, three to four years and then start all over again, meet, make new friends, meet new family. So I want to be a part of this community. It reminds me of where I'm from in upstate New York, and I really enjoy it here. My priority is, of course, the children within the district, uh, not only our future, but our current. I want to have an impact on the education that they receive and uh, go from there and work with my fellow candidates and board members throughout the process. And thank you for this opportunity. Hello, and I'm Todd Wells. First, I'd like to thank the Sparta High Point and the Sparta Area Chamber of Commerce for this amazing opportunity. I recently graduated from Sparta High School in 2019, one of the top 5% of my class, and I graduated with a 4.0 in Western Technical College's Business Management Program. As you can see, I'm really passionate about education. I'm the manager of my family's business, Floss Fine Meats, and I also have a brother with special needs which has motivated me to become a servant leader for those who cannot necessarily speak for themselves. I'm a current member of the Sparta School Board. And I also serve on the Wisconsin Association of School Boards Policy and Resolutions Committee, which works to support, promote, and advance public education. Growing up, I understood the importance of self-sacrifice and helping those in need. I also grew up with a lot of inspirations, including my family, or to former teachers, and members of the community who all gave me the morals and values I have today. I am running because I desire to serve, lead, and inspire. I'm qualified to be a board member because of my management experience and my desire to learn and grow. As a board member, I have pushed for teacher retention and support, fiscal responsibility, and a push towards improving the critical infrastructure of our district. I continue to enjoy making impactful changes on the board, I hope the community would see so on April 4th. Hello, my name is Josh Matheson. I want to say thank you to everybody for putting this together. I think the forum that you have here with High Point, the Chamber, everybody that's put this together is uh, uh, it's just a great opportunity for us to share. Uh, I'm going to reiterate what Pat said. Um, I know all these folks up here, and uh, I think the community will be well served with anybody. So I'm excited to see where this goes and what we learn from it. Um, so uh, as stated, my name's Josh Matheson. I've been a part of the community since 2010. I married a Sparta girl, so love brings me to the community. And uh, coming up on 13 years, <laughs> I felt compelled to give back, and this seemed like an opportunity that fit who I am. Um, so there's three kids currently that are going to three different schools. So we are knee deep into the Sparta area school district. Um, I've been a wealth management advisor for the past, coming up on 16 years. Um, and have earned my certified financial planning designation or CFP. So I'm looking forward to how I can apply that and also learn along the way. Thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity tonight to kind of talk about what I want to bring to the board and um, how I think things could um, maybe improve. My name is Ashley Behrens. I am a 1997 graduate of Sparta High School. My husband, Ben, is a 1996, or sorry, 1998 graduate of Sparta High School. Um, between us, we have five children in the district. Uh, we have a senior, a junior, a sophomore, a freshman, and a seventh grader. So we are very involved in um, sports and clubs and musicals and a lot of the things going on in the school district. Um, after high school, I went to UWL and got my degree in biology and a minor in chemistry. 
Following that, I went to um, TC and got my degree in dental hygiene. I'm currently a hygienist at Sparta Dental Center. And um, I started coming to board meetings shortly before COVID when I had talked to Amy Lopez at um, a ball game that her and her son and my son were playing together. And she, you know, she kind of talked about things that go on at the meetings and things that are said. Um, so I started attending meetings and I could not believe how much the board is kind of responsible for, not just with the school and the students, but the community too. So um, I, I'm interested in making things good for our community and our school. What do you see as a school board's role in supporting the students, staff, teachers, and administration in the Sparta Area School District? <laughs> um, I see the key word in this question as being supporting. It is my job to work alongside these people. Um, it's, it's not my job to micromanage. It, it's not my job to lead. It is my job to be the advocate for. Um, we have experts under our rooftops. We have experts in, in finance. We have experts in education. These aren't my fortes. Uh, my job is to listen to the community, try to help the administration be an extra voice, um, and then guide policy, set budget. But what happens under the rooftops, the important stuff is going to happen by our staff. They are way more qualified than some guy who sells cars. Um, so the biggest thing I can do day in, day out, is to just be an ear. Oh. <laughs> what relevant experience? No, what way? Elena, 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 same they question. Have, they have to ask. Same question, okay. yes. <laughs> Um, for the students, staff, teachers, and administration in the department. Uh, I see, you know, very similar as Pat stated, uh, support, you know, the community is here to support the board members. The board members are here to, are to support the school, the staff, and to really help set the budget, uh, govern policies, and establish goals. The board should be challenging the staff and the students to always improve. And, you know, the only way to improve, I see, is to be challenged. Challenge brings out the best in all of us. So along with that, we're here to lead uh, and set an example for the students. And hopefully, you know, some of them see themselves in our seat, in our shoes later on in life. The board's role is to help guide the superintendent, help them understand, or not, not necessarily understand, but help them develop the will of the board. Over, over the course of this year, we have helped develop the community climate and culture that is needed to help support our students first and our staff that need it most. Well, yes, we do guide policy. Yes, we do set the budget, but how we say those things is essential in order to develop that, that set community climate and culture that drives our goals forward. So that, that's really it, you know, helping the superintendent and that's, that's really what it boils down to is, is helping the superintendent understand who is first and who needs not the goals that we have. Thank you. Um, I, I believe also it's, it's for support, but um, I also think we're here to, and I'm going to, jump on the bandwagon with our um, a couple of the members of the board and of the current board and also our superintendent to drive culture. 
I have a vision, albeit unattainable potentially, um, but if we could take a role of serving others and putting their needs ahead of ours, that's the culture I wanna jump on board with. And a lot of the other items is gonna be a pile of learning and discernment. Thank you. I think the board's role in supporting students, staff, teachers, administration is just that supporting them. Um, we need to set them up for success. We need to provide them with the resources that they need to be successful and in whatever that may be in their extracurriculars, their education, um, just having good resources so that they are able to get the knowledge and education that they need to be successful. Um, that in turn is going to benefit our community. These students are going to be members of our community. Um, so, you know, our, our teachers, our doctors, our lawyers, our, our policemen, whatever, we need to set them up to be successful. And um, we need the teachers and the staff to also have the resources in order for them to do that for our students. What else experience would you bring to board if you were elected? Mr. Wade. Well, <clears throat> I'd like to say that, you know, I have a lot of experience. Uh, somebody who I kind of admired growing up, the late Dale Earnhardt Sr. once said, I'm a jack of all trade and a master of none, right? So I bring the ability to work as a team with my, with my peers, the public, the community and the other board members have the ability to adapt. Um, and I have the ability to lead as I've done so throughout my career for the last 19 years. Uh, I understand feedback. I, I enjoy lending a shoulder for people to kind of you know, talk to. And I, I always have the, my ears open and I'm willing to listen. So one of the critical things that I learned at the business management program was how to develop a strategic plan. And what that revolves around is the district mission, which is how we put our kids first. We put our kids first by preparing them emotionally, physically, and whatnot for and are to be the best students that they stewards that they could possibly be. And so with the board developing those the goals and understanding the strategic value, we are the ones if let's say that there was a school dance, we're not the ones on the floor. We're the ones looking up above uh, in the rafters per se, seeing everything as it goes. And that's where the entire point of strategy is in order to move the district forward. Yeah, uh, relevant experiences. What I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I help people to develop their personal and customized financial plans. How are we gonna be strategic and what steps, which act actionable steps do we need to take to make an impact? I think that directly aligns with what we're trying to do here. Um, my personality and my character is typically discerning, right? So not to pick on the political scope of things, but if you're Democrat, you think I'm a Republican. If you're Republican, you think I'm a Democrat because I want to hear both sides, right? And we're going to take, I think we should take the same approach, weighing pros and cons on each side of every every item that comes up, whether it's policy or best interest of the school district. Well, some experience that I would bring to the board is that I am approachable. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to work with others, hear what they're, they're wanting from us, what they need from us. Um, 
having been to several board meetings now since before COVID, um, I think the board that we have now is, is excellent at listening to the needs of the teachers and the staff and the students. And it, it's, it's nice to see that. And I'm willing to do that for the students in our, our community. Um, you know, I just, I've, I've never served on a board before. I will admit that, but um, like my communication skills, I think are huge. I think that matters a lot. Um, and I've actually talked with Pat quite a bit and Tony quite a bit, even in the uh, the election last year. So talking to them, I think, really set things in perspective. And your desire to learn, willingness to listen. Um, Ability to ask challenging questions, uh, desire to look outside the box for answers. I, I don't like the idea of doing things just because it's how we've done it for the last 20 years. Um, I enjoy challenging status quo, but probably most importantly, um, I like to seeking out people who look at things differently than I do to learn from them. Um, instead of deciding that I'm right, I want to figure out why I'm wrong. So if I can build on what they know and combine that with the things I believe, we can create a winning strategy for everybody. What do you see as a priority for the district coming out of the pandemic? Yes. So students have higher needs outside of the pandemic. You know that across the nation, uh, behavioral issues have arose. We know that there's a great deal of learning loss and how can we best allocate those resources to best meet their needs? Because students have been used to routine and the routine for the last three years has been COVID. So how can we get them back into the structure of what education used to be? How can we get them back to being high achievers and doing the good things that we need to do for their students? Uh, so one of those priorities, we need to, yeah, there, we, we need more resources for our students. I think that's one of the biggest things that we've seen, that we have seen, especially this year. It's a good question. The, the first answer is, is I don't know exactly. Um, last night at the uh, board meeting, I did learn a little bit about the resources that are being allocated from the state of Wisconsin, and they're more significant than they have been in the past. So I think from a, a resources standpoint, that's, that's great. Um, again, going back to culture, if you have the ability to take a step back and see what other people need and before your own needs are met, I think that's the approach we need to take and, and listen to what the teachers are telling us that are, their students need in their classroom. So again, listening, understanding, and discerning through that information is going to be a big step towards understanding what the solution is going to be. I think one of the bigger priorities that um, the school district is working on is the health of the students and the staff even. Um, these kids went through a couple of years of just I, all over the place. They didn't, you know, they didn't have much structure and um, coming back into school and getting used to the routine again, it's hard on them, it's hard on the teachers. Um, so I think, seeing that they're working on and caring about the mental health of students and staff and um, working on ways that they can improve that for them. It's going to help not only you know, with the mental health, but with their, their education as well. And I think they're doing a good job of researching and finding resources to help with that. I'm not sure that our priorities necessarily change. 
I think our job is to educate kids. Our, our job is to create a healthy, whole educational process. Um, has what school looks like when kids came back from COVID been different than before they left? Yes. Do we have more disciplinary issues than prior? Yes. Um, I think we undervalued some of the mental health concerns as with our race back to normal. Um, we put, we set kids up for failure in a way. You can't take kids who haven't been exposed to other kids for, for two years and dump them back into a world of hundreds of kids and not expect some pushback. Um, I don't think that's a kid issue. I think it's an adult issue. But our priorities, they haven't changed. Help kids every way that they need help. Uh, in my opinion, you know, I I don't know specifically for each and every student within this part of district. However, I believe the availability of teachers, staff, counselors, coaches is a is a big step. And to touch on other points that have been made, and I'm a very big advocate for it, is mental health. Uh, mental health across the country is very concerning. And whether you're a licensed counselor or just a friend, an adult friend, uh, companion, you know, being available for that student to feel comfortable to be able to talk or just have physical companionship with somebody, I think that is most important. How will you work to contribute to the school board and community working together to create a positive community? Yeah, that's fairly simple. It, it, it's going to be a lot of learning in the beginning, right? There's a lot of policy to understand. There's a lot of feedback that's going to be given. So um, a lot of listening and understanding on what the community wants. Um, also, what our staff has and what they want to provide for feedback. The goal is to um, serve the students, right? So understanding how to best do that and stay curious, in my opinion, is the best approach because um, that'll allow you the information to make that educated decision as to what the best approach is for how we can how we can do that and combine the two. Uh, working together with the the community and you know even the school, I like what I've seen. I've seen Pat do it. I, I don't know if Amy has done it, but they're going into classrooms and kind of observing what's going on, and they're they're participating with the students and getting involved with them. And I think that is great, and that is something I would love to do. Um, but also, you know, like they said, the willingness to learn, to be open with communication. Um, and just I guess, having the patience and understanding it's not all going to come right away. It's going to take time. Um, but yeah, even you know, even if not elected, I will continue to attend school board meetings just because I think this is, I think it's something everybody should do, um, just because of being in the community. Um, but yeah, working together with these guys, I think, would be wonderful. No, not yet. They're not done. It's Mr. Matheson starting. So the other three have to. Um, I guess I would I would continue to do what I've been doing for the last year. Um, I believe that every person that comes to the school board meeting is there because they care about kids. We we may care differently. We may have different perspective or or different ways that we see to reach the goal, but we're all there for the same reason. We, we want to move the school district forward. Uh, at the annual meeting this year, we had a, I think a pretty good turnout. Uh, we had a number of speakers. The next day, I reached out to every person that talked. Not every person that I agreed with, not every person that I thought brought value to the meeting. I reached out to every person that talked and I thanked them just for coming. 
and we need more. Um, we need more to hear from the community. We need to know what they want, and we need to be able to educate them in what we're trying to do. Yeah, in my opinion, uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, be available to the community, to the fellow members, be willing to work with each other and listen, learn from each other. And I simply put, just continue to be a leader, a mentor, and be that positive example. Uh, so you, we expect our children to represent the Sparta district you know, highly. So the same expectation should be of us as community members, board members, staff members. So just be a leader, a mentor, and be an example. I just want to point out the, the strides that we've taken since last year, right? We, uh, we have went from a board that has yelled, yelled at each other to board that shakes hands after meetings. And that's a huge thing. And as, as community leaders, our students do look up to us. And so when we go from what was before to what is now, this is how we work together. This is how we govern. This is how we be present. I've had the honor of speaking with all our directors, all our principals, and being there for our students and knowing what their needs are from April to March. In my year, I have done it, and I, I'm pretty confident that anyone else can too. Yep, it's. Uh, what are your strengths and what opportunities are you in this part of AMC district? I think one strength with our school district is that we have amazing teachers that want to help the kids. They want to see the kids succeed, um, and they're they're willing to do all they can to help these kids. Um, I guess. A weakness, maybe, or an opportunity for growth would be the teacher and staff retention. Um, looking at some stats, 27% of our teachers stay less than a year with the district. 25% uh, stay one to two years. And then 15% will stay for 11 plus years. So, you know, it would be nice to see some of these teachers hanging around a little longer. Um, they're developing bonds with the children. They're they're helping these kids become adults, and it would just be nice to see them stick around a little longer. Strength hands down staff. Um, I've had the opportunity to visit all of our rooftops, um, get in talk to teachers, custodians, nutrition services people. Um, we've got some amazing people that have some longevity, uh, and, and they're not here for the money. Um, I'm not proud to say we're not the highest paying district in the area. Love to be, but we're not. Um, they're here supporting our kids. So they are hands down uh, our strength. As far as area opportunity for growth, um, I, I think our communication style. A lot of times I see our districts talking in RFPs and IEPs and, and, and things that the average person came to a board meeting, they wouldn't have any idea what we're talking about. If we're going to encourage people to come, we need to talk in a language that they understand so that they can gain perspective for when they leave. So I believe that the Sparta district has many strengths, as, and one being the staff, as mentioned. Uh, also, their extracurricular activities that are available to the students. I believe Sparta excels in that. However, the improvement or the opportunity for growth, and I may ruffle some feathers, but uh, we need to prioritize education over extracurricular activities. I believe that prioritizing education is more beneficial for the children statistically as you know we don't see less than one percent 
GoPro for any extracurricular activity that they're involved in, push for education, trades, art, math, et cetera. So to kind of repeat what we've done before is that our grade stamp is our one major strength. They're the ones that push our students and the ones that help us grow, the ones that provide us with all the information we need in there to make strong and conclusive decisions. I would say that one opportunity that I really wanted to push for is on the, the, the fiscal responsible side, right? We could, we could pay down more than that. I know that you know we put down four million now, and we got one point eight back from the state, and one point eight back in interest savings, and that's huge. That's almost a net zero impact on our on our community. I also know that we have an opportunity to focus on our buildings. Our our long term capital improvement budget zero right now, and I think we should put a focus on that while putting our students and our staff first. Uh, yeah, one one strength, and I'm just going to reiterate what everybody else said, right, is the caring staff. I work with, personally, I work with uh, a number of the staff people in the school district. I also am continually impressed with the business services team every time you guys put on your, uh, uh, or are at the, the, the board meeting. So, um, so the staff, yes, is, in my opinion, the biggest strength, but... Um, Ashley's right, retention is concerning. Um, that's an opportunity. Another one is uh, the community had some great ideas last week on the facilities um, at the facilities meeting. So thinking outside the box and having some of that think tank opportunity, I think is one other way that um, we can improve this, the community outreach. Uh, what is your view of the role of charter schools in public education? And how would you ensure that our charter schools have equitable resources? I think we had a very similar question to this at last year's forum, maybe not written exactly the same way. Um, I'm a believer that success is about opportunity. You can't pigeonhole every kid into the same corner and expect the same results. Children learn differently. Uh, they learn at different pace. They learn in different ways. Having the variety of learning opportunities that we have in the school district is really healthy. Um, my grandson is a, is a Montessori student, and I can tell you with absolute certainty that he wouldn't be as successful today as he would have been going through standard education. Now, next year, he's going to transition to the middle school um, a year earlier than he needs to because I think he's ready and he needs that challenge. Um, each kid is different. Let's give them the opportunities they need to excel. So, <clears throat> excuse me. This is uh, fairly new for me. So I've done a little bit of reading about it. Uh, again, I'm here to learn. So charter schools, I, I feel need to continue to be challenging and innovative for the students. and as stated, you know, provide the students with what they need to excel as every student is different. So just continue to provide the best opportunities for these students and be there to support them and guide them, lead them and continue to be that example as I've stated many times. Um, and you know, hopefully we can figure out the, a little bit more defined financial basis in the district and that'll allow for the continuation of resources. So I have to admit last year I was kind of in my box and I and I needed to really look outside of it right and I knew that yeah I know that charter schools would not work for me personally but I do know that they work for a lot of our students and they do address the needs that they have. Similar to what my brother needs for his IEP even though he has special needs, other students have different needs and we need to address them. It's essential to in order to challenge them, to have them excel, 
you know, tests and paperwork don't really work for a, a lot of students. And, and you know, we, we got to turn them into the community leaders that they can be, the ones that strive for a challenge, the ones that understand the soft skills and are to act well in the business environment. Because no business wants the A-plus student that don't know how to communicate, that don't know how to critically think. Well, that's the cool part about our the, the time we're in, right? Um, I have a daughter that's an artist. I would argue that the mechanic that has 40 years experience could be considered an artist, right? By listening to an engine run and know what's wrong with it before he uh, has to work on it, he or she. I feel I've become an artist in my professional career, right? With being able to think outside the box and showing different ways to do that. It's the same thing here. Right. You can take some of these um, different schools, and I'm not, I, I need to learn more about uh, the charters, charter schools, because I'm not, um, I'm not, I don't know enough, right? Um, but I do know that people think differently, that we all operate differently, so I'm uh, curious to learn as much as I can about it. I think that us having the charter schools like sales um, and you know, maybe even STEM and Montessori are fabulous for our students. Um, and to hear that there are waiting lists for some of these schools is it's very telling. It's, it's letting us know that, yes, there is a need for them here. And they are helping students succeed and learn in their own ways. Because as it's been said, everybody learns differently. I'm a hands-on person. I, I don't do well sitting in a lecture hall, taking notes, reading it, and then taking a test. I need to do hands-on. <laughs> that, that would work. Um, but yeah, I, I think we need to make sure that we have these opportunities for these kids that are, are needing these alternatives to traditional learning and letting them you know, grow their own way instead of being in the boxes. As, as, Todd said. Um, one possibility of a school board is to improve the financial education and share teachers and students from the resources they need. How much oversight do you think board members and parents should have in terms of educational content to support the curriculum in public schools? So I think it's important that the board members understand the curriculum, number one. And number two, the public should be involved. Uh, these are their kids that we're teaching and that we are, you know, trying to prepare for the future, for their future. So absolutely, the public, the community needs to be involved. Um, in how? It's, you know, in any way possible. Um, I support, you know, a challenging curriculum. And that's one thing I, I would really like to push is challenge. I, I wanna challenge these students, uh, our community to improve. And that's what I look forward to. All right, so the first thing I'm going to start off with is that the board only really has, over, mainly only has oversight over the superintendent. And overall, the curriculum, we should be reaching towards the goal that the curriculum should be enriching, challenging, helping our students grow, develop, and succeed. Um, but we're, we're not the ones looking over every classroom plan and, and making, nitpicking every decision because that's not our job. It's not our full-time job. It's the superintendent's job, and those are the ones that are the experts. Um, I know that we uh, do have policies that uh, set that are set into place to, uh, in case if a parent or a community member is concerned about a certain subject or issue, they can bring it up to the superintendent and then it could work its way up or down from there. But otherwise, um, you just make the really critical strategic decisions and leave the rest up to the guy in charge. Yeah, I think that's well said. Um, you know, 
we live in a world where everybody's got different views um, and we need to be empathetic towards that, but also um, take a stance that we know is right, right? So and that should be um, the stance of the people that are, are on the board. Right? They, they need to look at the policy to see how that's governed um, and allow our the, the staff that's hired to make the best decisions they possibly can. Um, we have to let them do their job, but we can give them the resources to best do that for our, for our kids. I think we need to let the educators decide on the materials that they're going to be teaching the students. And parents do have a right to decide whether or not they want their children to learn from that educator or have another alternative. Um, that being said, they don't have the right to decide what other children are learning. And some of these topics, um, you know, some of the things that they're learning, this may be the only opportunity they have to learn this stuff. Um, so, you know, having maybe an opportunity to opt out of a chapter or a class or something, if parents don't agree with the material, I think would be an option. Um, but I think letting the educators decide um, what material they're going to be teaching and how they're going to be teach it would be the best. Approve is not choose. Um, I, I think the Sparta School District is very transparent in all of our curriculum. If, if a parent wants to know what's being taught in the class, all they need to do is ask. We don't hide anything. Um, it, you do not want me choosing curriculum. <laughs> I, it's not my forte. It, it, my, my, and, that, and that goes back to my answer to the first question we had. It's not my job to micromanage. We're better off letting an expert be an expert. If there are concerns that come up, we can address those concerns, but the overall guiding decision is made by the person who is far more qualified than I am. So the big thing is, and this was very, this is very similar to the last question and the question that we had last year. And my, my stance on it sort of remains the same. That is one individual or one small minority loud group shouldn't really ruin it for all. Uh, we should put all educational opportunities for our students first. And the, all these are educational opportunities. No one on the right side of history has banned a book. No one on the right side of history has, has coiled education in any means. And so we need to be the ones that's, that decide what's right for our students. And what's right for our students is to become strong, healthy adults. And we should treat them almost like they're adults in the room and that they should know as much as they can to be successful. It's a good question. Um, again, the, the people in the community are gonna speak by how they wanna drive the culture by voting in board members that they want. Uh, I would argue that they're gonna try to find the most morally sound people to help guide. Um, where they feel it's, it's fit. Um, my personal experience, which I don't think should change, is that I've been notified continuously with any sensitive matter. So status quo seems to be fine at the moment. Um, and if it continues to be presented that way and shared that these things are being taught in the classroom, I'm comfortable with that approach. Um, I, I agree with all that's been said so far. I think giving students the opportunity to hear these controversial topics is key in them becoming adults. You know, we're not going to sit a class of sixth graders down and debate abortion. 
but teaching maybe a high school student what all an abortion is about, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, and again, if parents want to opt out of maybe that chapter or that class altogether, that should be an option. You know, we, like Josh said, we did receive a message when they are having the talk in, in middle school. And if I didn't want my children to be there learning about sex, ed sex education, I could choose to keep them out of that. Um, and I think, again, as Josh said, status quo is, is working for us. <laughs> On the board this year, we debated policy 2240 for somewhere around 60 days. Yeah, it's all about opinion and controversial topics. So we, we talked about this every way that I could think of. And, you know, I had one, I think I shared this in a board meeting. I had one really memorable conversation with a, a gentleman who started as a teacher and went into administration, started his career in 1964. He said the difference between then and now is that there were no controversial topics. Well, that's not true. Kennedy got shot in 1963. We were having race riots. There was controversial topics. It was just the way that people viewed them were much different. This is all about right place, right time. You can teach any child any piece of curriculum as long as you do it at the right time and in the right way. <laughs> So again, just uh, to support what's been said, I think the key word here is for our educators to facilitate um, and not bring in out their personal opinions. However, to facilitate a educational conversation amongst the students and Specifically on these topics of substance abuse and sex education, absolutely. Um, drug abuse is one of the worst things across our country that are, you know, killing several people nationwide, uh, worldwide. It's something that's probably not going to go away. And sex education, I, I think that is crucial to students. And they, they should have the opportunity to learn. School safety continues to be a major concern across the state and country. In your opinion, what can be done to improve the overall safety of our students? Yeah, another good question. Um, I feel like the school district is taking the best steps they can to create a, a safe environment. Um, but again, this is something I need to learn more about. Um, so I think in regards to um, from a health concern, if if I can just pick on one, right? If it's a health concern, I think being respectful towards uh, potentially getting other people sick is important to understand. Um, if you're sick, stay home, for example, right? Um, and and just being respectful of others' um, space and and if they're in the school. Um, that's there's many other topics that go along with the safety issue. So, and I'm aware of that, but we need to uh, talk further. That's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I, I think our district is doing a good job at keeping students, staff, faculty, guests safe. Um, you know, having to check in in the schools before entering, wearing a badge. We have an excellent SRO. Um, as far as improving overall safety, again, Josh, it's a loaded question. What, what specifically? Um, equipment? Yeah, we have we have our road to grounds guy that um, he goes around and checks all the the equipment, the buildings, whatever. Um, safety in the classroom. How do we how do we manage reckless children? You know, that's something that maybe teachers need to um, address. I've, I've heard 
stories recently of throwing books and acting out. And so, uh, I don't know. There is always room for improvement. But improvement always has a cost. So we, we need a balance, and this is a this hoser may have left. We we have forty million dollars annually to spend however we want. If we prioritize safety, we can put in metal detectors. We could put in fog machines to cloud hallways and invaders can't see. We can paint red lines across classrooms and make sure the kids are behind. So if there's somebody in the hallway that's an active shooter, they they can't see. We can go as far as the community wants, but when we do those things. It comes at an expense, and typically that expense is the day-to-day -day education of kids. If the community told us that is the priority, I can tell you the board would listen, but I think the community needs to understand that we have done everything possible to ensure a safe environment for every kid. Yeah, so I, again, this is a several headed monster right and you can look at this in several different ways different perspectives um, i think as a parent in the sparta community i am i don't have a concern for my child's safety and when it comes to their physical safety uh, again i think it's just upholding standards um, if someone is sick you know, send them home if they're here. If there's kids being obnoxious, correct them. You know, just set the standard and simply enforce the standard across the the district and, you know, learn from our the past and just continue to improve as we can as a district. So the first thing I thought of when this came up was security cameras and metal detectors, but that's not really what I want to go with with this. I want to, I really want to, I really want to prioritize the mental safety of our students. And, you know, mental health is a big issue with our students. We've seen an uptick in the statistics and the standards and, and everything that be. And we know that there's a need, right? And so and when they're mentally ill, they are like more likely to have substance abuse and 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 engage in behaviors that are not good. I lost a dear friend to suicide, and it's nothing that no parent, friend, or even an educator would want to go through. There's an old saying when it comes to mental health, and that is, if you don't know someone, you will. Yeah. <laughs> um, COVID-19 increased funding and hard decisions need to be made. What priorities would you recommend for our budget? Um, last night at the board meeting, we were talking about um, cutting some positions, um, staff positions within the district. And another thing they had talked about in terms of cutting these positions was staff taking on additional or alternate positions. Don't want to overwhelm staff teachers any more than they already are, but that could be a feasible option. Um, we have also put off a lot of the capital projects, um, doing um, things like the auditorium, although there is money set aside for that, but some of these other projects that we have, um, parking lots or boilers or whatever, you know, they're gonna need attention. Um, but I think the district has done a good job prioritizing what's best and when. Yeah. I think first I'd like to, to address real quickly that the decreased funding isn't necessarily so much of a decrease as it is not an increase. Um, our funding model was based on enrollment. 
we live in a world where I guess the two most things you hear about are, are school choice and open enrollment. But we also just live in a world of declining birth rate. Average family isn't having as many kids. I would guess 10 years from now, we're going to have a, a less, it's, it's a trend that's continued for 100 years. 40 cow farmers dead, people aren't having any kids to be hired hands. Um, so what I would prioritize is being different. We need to find a ways to accomplish what we're accomplishing today in a different way that either saves money or the money we spend impacts multiple places. We're going to have the same amount of bills. That won't end. We need to have staff that impacts kids. We just need to find ways to do it creatively. So this is one of my not so good fortes. Um, being in the military for 20 years, it almost seems like, you know, money is simply grown on trees and is available for whatever the military wants. However, that's not the case. So I think just working with my peers, getting a better understanding of the different pots of money, how it all works uh, within the district and, you know, other, some people, you know, understand wealth and finances better than others. So it's just simply working together, prioritizing the needs of the district and maintaining, you know, what we have and approve upon what we can, how we can, and when we can. So one of the big things that I want to do, or what I really want to do, is focus on our long-term capital improvements, our strategic plan for how we facelift our buildings. But I realize we can't because the thing is, is that we always, we need to put students and our staff first. And even then we still have to cut positions. We still have to do these things because we're just going to have to cut away until something changes. And frankly, yes, we do need to be innovative. And I really trust that our administration is. And they're trying their darndest to put students first. And that's the thing. Yes, I want things, but I, I know that it can't happen unless we have some whimsical windfall because I want to put our students and our staff first. Okay, I'm going to talk really fast because I got a lot to say on this one. <laughs> um, each person in every department is going to feel like their department needs funding. So we need to be listening to each person. However, from an efficiency standpoint on the budget, I understand that there's a formula, so to speak, that you can maximize, if you will, the efficiency of how this is going to work. But the impact on taxes can be adverse or maybe not adverse, but you have to figure out what that formula is. So that's what I want to figure out. <laughs> Uh, how would you recommend the district ensure that there are students who are underserved, underrepresented, and with background of trauma and children? I think that fits for a goal, which is simply all kids. We do not make decisions based on leaving anyone behind, whether they are the underserved or the excellent. Um, we need to see growth across the district in every building, in every classroom. Growth is measured differently in different segments. Um, I remember Todd telling a story about his, his brother learning how to pull towels. We also have kids that qualified for internationals at DECA. Our district serves a wide range of children. And we need to make sure that our priorities are all kids. So <clears throat> I, I view the very similar to Pat. Uh, all kids within our district are equal, uh, treat each other equally. And, you know, my, one of my children has an IEP. So I think that is a benefit for the kids within the district. Um, 
and that allows, you know, again, the growth of children in their own way at their rate. And as an educator, they see, you know, the benefits of the IEP and also help enforce it. Um, but just having those av availabilities or options for students is, I'd say, continue and treat everybody equally. So this is where my life experience comes in. I, I am the student with the 4.0, but I grew up with a brother and watched him grow up who is at the age of 20, still nonverbal, and still wears pull-ups and is just, uh, he, he just has a lot of needs. And how I see it is that we need to focus on the needs of all our students from the 4.0 to the one that has those, from the high achievers to the ones that have those high needs. And so, like, like like Pat said my story on how he learned how to pull towels. He knows how to dress himself now. He knows how to he knows how to do these critical things that we do every day and we don't see as achievements anymore. But in reality, those were big things that we never thought that he could do and we're happy for the district for it. Yeah, this this seems to be more of a priority as as the years go by. Um, I come from a family that has given a lot of time, had people come in and stay in their homes, lived with them uh, that have special needs. So this is uh, particularly important. Um, but it, it, those that have special needs need to be given the resources they can to also thrive. Right, going back to the artistry comment, every but he thinks in a different manner and can be an artist in a different way. We need to provide the resources to those that have special needs, um, the ability to do exactly what Todd just shared. So however we need to do that, we need to allow that to happen, uh, serve all of the kids in the community. Again, looking at some stats, we are a district with many underserved students. 45.5% wow. of our students have either free or reduced lunch. Almost half of our students are free or reduced lunch. 37% are economically disadvantaged. So there's a lot of need for these students out there. And I think the district is doing a wonderful job. We had the backpack program. I don't know if that's still around. Um, sending food home with children on weekends that maybe won't get to eat. Um, I know there are teachers that keep clothes in their rooms for these children. Um, another big one, though, is the interventionists that we have at the school. They, um, both of my daughters needed math intervention. And so I think having these interventionists to help these, these struggling kids is also really huge for us. I think with many people of our country, of the community, are probably still wondering how do we combat bullying with the technology that we have today, right? We can combat it in the classroom, but the potential of it continuing outside of the classroom is, is large. Um, I think uh, bullying creates negative environment and at times hostile environments. I know personally of a handful of children or students that have uh, switched to a different district because of this topic. Um, the district simply needs to focus on creating a safe, caring, respectful learning environment. <clears throat> and really stand true to the district's zero tolerance policy and then strict, strict, enforce stricter punishments. I think uh, create better reporting processes and implementing open door policies would be beneficial as well. So this goes back to the mental health subject. 
Okay, if students are being harassed to the point where they are not happy and they do not feel safe in school, how can they learn? Now, uh, my personal opinion is, is that zero tolerance, the immediate suspension, detention, whatnot, I don't think that's really the solution. Because everyone has problems and we just need to do our best to solve those problems. I know that Sam and the team are working really hard on PBIS strategies and how to develop again as a community. And this goes back to the, the COVID. Not everyone knows how to handle each other again. And that's why it's become a problem. And so we need to get back where we are a school community. We are here to learn. And we are here just to accept each other. Um, number one, in my opinion, I think we need to control what we can and understand that we can't control everything. Um, number two, the vision I have in regards to the culture I was talking about earlier on was um, if a child drops their books in third grade, seventh grade, or a sophomore in high school, and somebody that might be more popular or um, whatever it might be, picks up their books instead of laughing. If we all did that, then showed that example here on the board, as well as adults and parents, I don't think we would have had the experience we had during the pandemic. I think we can do the same thing, whether it's bullying or anything else, but lead by example. I think the comment on mental health um, hit the nail on the head. Um, there's been a lot more bullying since the pandemic. And I think getting to the bottom of the why are we bullying? You know, do we need to um, have some kind of therapy or counseling for these bullies? Um, in addition to the ones that they are bullying. But I think you know, there being consequences, yes, there need to be consequences. But I, I don't I don't know what those are. You can take a, a, a person that's got a drunk driving ticket and look, some have gotten five, six, seven of them. So are consequences really um, going to work, I guess, for the, the bullying? I think getting to the bottom of their, their mental health and the, the why, why this is happening would help. Stopbullying.gov, Google school bullying programs, and there's dozens of ways to stop bullying, but there are no schools in the United States who don't have some sort of bullying issue. I don't think we're going to solve the world's problem. We're not going to end it. Um, bullying is going to continue. I think bullying has been in schools long before us and it will be in schools long after us. The thing we need to do is, is is minimize as much as possible by by figuring out why is the bully bullying. It, there's always been focus on the the victim, and I understand why. It, it's the victim mentality, um, and, and we do want to give that kid a hug and, and pick him up and let him know that things are okay. But we have to spend the time to figure out what's going on. Is it lack of attention? Is it reaching out for for needing help? Why is the bullier doing it? <laughs> Mr. Wells, you'll be next. Our That was our last question. Each candidate will now have 90 seconds to give a closing statement. We'll have you summarize your vision for the Sparta Area School District based on the answers you gave this evening, including anything you would like to add that you don't feel you had a chance to share this evening. Mr. Wells, go ahead, 90 seconds. From a 4.0 to those that have high needs, I believe that all students have the opportunity to succeed. And that's really been my goal. And I've really seen it grow and develop within myself too. I have attended many uh, board development events. I've attended the convention. I've done everything I can to become a better board member every single day, because I know that's what I need to do for our students and staff. 
my number one priority since last year because teachers have inspired me because we need to focus on our staff. One of my critical statistics is that if I were to walk around the high school right now, I'd only know one English teacher and there's six there. So, I mean, what, four years and there isn't any that I know? I mean, that, that's that's a big thing. Teacher retention has been my one thing. I've been personally affected with, with mental health issues and, and you could go all down the line and in reality, I believe that I have the vision that you know, that focuses on a wide variety of issues. I could focus on fiscal responsibility, becoming a better board member. How can we strategically plan in the limited financial scope that we have to meet the needs of our students? Um. Well, I'd like to share that I thought this opportunity tonight was fantastic to learn a little bit about the uh, the other folks that are running. So thank you for, for sharing. Um, my goal is to leave the um, school district better than when I came in. And the best way we can do that and serve our kids and the staff, uh, primarily I we focus on the kids, I think. so. We wanna create an environment that when we leave, we've got something sustainable 25 to 40 to 100 years from now. Um, at least that's the vision. Again, the culture is, I wanna, I wanna drive that, but I wanna show you and share with you now how, how that's gonna happen. The, the first part of being on the board is, is gonna be to listen, meet staff, community members, and uh, to be seen in the schools with the students when I have a smile on my face, right? And I'm treating other people with respect and a handshake. That's the goal that I have. Um, on the financial side of things, I feel like I'm skilled in that area. Um, and I have an understanding and it can provide, I think a tremendous amount of impact there. Thank you. Right. Uh, tonight was a great opportunity to hear some ideas from a um, the other candidates and having heard them, I think that any candidate up here has something to bring to the table. Um, all different, but I think any one of them uh, would do well. And I think a mix of ideas is what we need. Um, we have the ability and the desire to set our children up for success. We have the staff, the teachers, um, the students, we have programs like DECA and um, FFA that, you know, FFA has 200 people. Um, DECA has 50, and these are highly successful programs. So we've got the ability to set our students up for success. Um, but as a board, we need to be supportive of the needs of staff and our students as well. It, um, like I said, I think you know, Pat's got great experience on the board. He's he's very vocal and, um, yes, you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, he, he's brought a lot of good things to the board, and so has Todd. But I think, um, you know, just working together to put students first and um, meet their needs is what we need to do. My vision is that this part of your school district becomes a destination school district. When people from around the country are looking to move to this area, get a job in Holman, get a job in Alaska, get a job in Toma, I want them to fight for housing in Sparta because they want their kids to go to our school district. That's an attainable goal, but it's not a goal that happens overnight. Um, it, it takes a lot of work. And it takes a lot of attention and focus on detail. I, I believe we can get there. I think we have the staff. I think we have the, the facilities. I think we have the community support. It's just putting the pieces together. Um, will I be unhappy if we don't reach that? Yeah, I would, because I think we can. Um, I love this school. I love this community. Not fan of the weather, but I wouldn't move. 
This is my home. Help me if we've read that there's a little goal. I want us to succeed. I want us to be as good as we possibly can be. All right. Well, again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, and I hope, you know, this has allowed you to kind of make a decision as to who you would like to represent the board. Uh, I would like to reassure the, the community that my intentions are to be a part of the community for the foreseeable future. And I would love to continue to be an important piece of the community by volunteering, coaching, and potentially being a board member and providing an outside perspective. Uh, my goal is not in any particular order, prioritize education, followed by extracurricular activities, more community involvement, challenging curriculum, uh, more focus on trades, and I would like to learn and get a better understanding of the district's finances. Uh, <clears throat> I believe that, and I understand this job involves lots of teamwork in which that type of work style I tend to excel in. I'll also bring leadership ex experience to the team and have the potential to elevate our team's capabilities. I believe I have some unique skills that help separate me from others. And I pride myself in the exceptional drive and determination to succeed, all right? Along with my passion to assist others, I would like to be part of the solution and not the problem. On behalf of Sparta High Point Charter School, I would like to thank all of the candidates uh, for your time and your perspectives this evening. Um, we appreciate you very much, and we're looking forward to the election at the beginning of April. Thank you, audience, for attending. Have a great rest of your night.